know, it, it really was hitting to the point where I was thinking, you know, look, it was absolutely ridiculously dry. So what would you normally expect with a boat? Well, I was expecting it to be a little bit wetter than it was. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is really encouraging, and obviously, this product throws the meter a little bit as well. So, once you get all this back to um, the epoxy, it will, it will definitely come down even further. Uh, once we get inside, you'll probably find there's a little bit of water in the bilges, and I know there's a water leak because I've just seen one inside one had a quick recce before you guys arrived. So we need to look and see what that's doing inside the boat. But externally, the hull, to me, is, is in pretty good nick. And if you found a boat that, that had a very high moisture meter reading, what would that mean for the boat? Um, well, the, the trouble with laminate is the fact that if it's what I call ridiculously high, there is a, and depends on what it's made of, if it's a chop strand mat, this boat, uh, because of where it's come from, is woven rovings. So woven rovings are less susceptible to sucking the moisture up because they haven't got loads of end filaments. Whereas a lot of our UK built boats have very short filaments, so they're what's called chop strand mat. So when the, the moisture gets into those, it's a lot harder to dry it out. And uh, I think most of us in, in the surveying profession understand that laminate, when it gets saturated, does tend to lose about 25% of its strength. And that's when things start to happen, whereas when you see the boat rested down on its keel, uh, you'll start to see the hull is actually sagging over the top of the keel because the hull is starting to lose its strength. And likewise, when the boat is lifted and you give the keel a bit of a push, you'll start to see the hull start to oscillate. 